Welcome to Electra Online and now we're going to do another optimization problem. In this case we're going to be producing sledgehammers and we're going to try and maximize the profit. The information is that we produce two models, A and B. Model A requires three pounds of iron and model B requires four pounds of iron. Model A requires 12 minutes of labor, model B requires six minutes of labor. We make four dollars of profit on each model A and three dollars of profit on each model B. And there's a constraint, there's several constraints. We have a maximum of a thousand pounds of iron to use and 40 hours of labor, which is 2,400 minutes. So how many of each hammer, model A and model B, should we produce to maximize the profit? So the first thing we want to do, step one, is want to define the variables, X and Y. We don't want to use A and B, that gets very confusing. Use two independent variables, X and Y, to represent the number of each model. So x equal the number of model A and y equal the number of model B. This is a very important step. A lot of us like to use A and B. It's already there. Why not use A and B as variables? No, you want to go to a different set of variables, express x and y in terms of how many of model A, how many of model B. The second step is we need to determine if we're maximizing or minimizing something and what it is that we're maximizing or minimizing. In this case, we're maximizing profit, so maximize profit. The third step, we need a what we call an a, um, objective function, that's what we call it. We need a function that represents the maximum profit. So the third step is we come up with a function P equals, and of course it's going to depend upon how much profit we make from each model and how many we build. So if we make four dollars of profit of model A and we're going to build X quantity, then 4X represents how much profit we're going to make from producing a certain number of model A, and then plus 3Y is going to produce how much profit we make of the model B. Okay, the fourth step, we need to find our constraints. And so what are we constrained by? Well, first of all, we're constrained by the amount of iron that we have. So we know that we need three pounds for A and four pounds for B. So we can say that three times X, which is the total amount of iron we're going to use for model A, plus four times Y, which is the total amount of iron we're going to use for model B, that has to be less than or equal to the total amount of iron that we have, which is a thousand. And then we're limited by labor. So 12x, which is the total number of minutes we're going to use to make model A, plus 6 times y, which is the total amount of minutes we're going to use for model B, has to be less than or equal to the total amount of hours that we have available, or in this case, minutes. So everything is in minutes, so total amount of minutes. Of course, x and y also have to be greater than or equal to zero. That's to be understood. The fifth step is we're going to need to find the boundaries of the region that will satisfy all the conditions. So what we're going to do is we're going to graph inequalities and so we're going to find regions on the XY graph and we need to find those boundaries. So to do that we're going to take the, equa the inequalities and turn them into equations so we can graph them. So find boundary equations and all that we do here is simply turn the inequality sign into an equal sign. So that's simple enough. So that would be 3x plus 4y equal to 1,000. But then we'd want to turn into a y equals mx plus b type of equation. We want to write as y equals mx plus b so we can more easily graph that. So we move the 3x over to the other side, divide both sides by 4. So we get y is equal to minus 3 over 4x plus 1,000 divided by 4, which is 250. So all I did was to move my 3x to the other side, it became a minus 3x, and divide both sides by 4. So y divided by 4 is 1, 4y divided by 4 is 1, 3x divided by 4 is 3 fourths, and 1,000 divided by 4 is, oop, not 2,500, but 250. We do the same with the second equation, so this is our first equation. So we end up with 12x plus 6y is um, equal to 2,400. And again, we move the 12x to the left side, becomes a minus 12x, divide both sides by 6. So we get y equals minus 2x, and plus 24 divided by 6 would be 400. 
So there's our second equation. So there's our first, that's our second equation. There's our first equation. Those are the two equations defining our boundaries. Again, I moved the 12x to the left side, became a minus 12x divided by 6, minus 2. 24 divided by 6 is 4, plus two more zeros. All right, so now we can go ahead and graph those equations. So graph is my step number six. So we'll do that, and let me make some more room. I'll get rid of this y equals mx plus b. So make some more room right here. There's my y-axis, there's my x-axis. We always, of course, work in the first quadrant. So taking my first equation, my y-intercept is 250. So let's say that's my 250 right here. And my slope is minus 3 quarters. Minus 3 quarters, that brings it over this way. Not quite a minus 1 slope. And so what's the point right there? Well, when y is equal to 0, 3 quarters x is equal to 250. So 1,000 divided by 3, which means 333 and a third is the point where it crosses the x-axis. That's my first line. My second line has an intercept at 400. This is right here. And it has a steeper slope of minus 2x, so it comes down this way. And that means it hits this point right here at x equals 200. Again, when y is equal to 0, 2x equals 400, x equals 200. And so there we go. Now, which region on the xy plane satisfies these conditions? So now we're going to go back to the inequalities and plug in some test points to see which side of the inequality, which side of these dividing lines or boundaries satisfy the, the conditions here. So let's try a 0, 0. If I plug in a 0 for x and a 0 for y, which is this point right there, and I'm dealing with the 3x plus 4 equals 1,000, that's the line number 1, so I'm dealing with line number one, this is line number two, right? So line number one, line number two, inequality number one, inequality number two, might as well label them so we keep track of which ones we're dealing with. So we're looking for a point on this side of line number one. Zero plus zero, is that less than or equal to a thousand? And the answer is yes, which means I found the point in the region that satisfies inequality means this is satisfying the inequality. This other side is not, so I can get rid of this side. So this side of number one does not, does not satisfy the inequality because we, know we picked a point over here and it did satisfy the inequality. Now we'll do it for the second inequality. Again, we plug zero and zero in. Does, is that less than 2400? Of course it is. Again, now we're comparing it to line number two, it means this point on this side of line number two satisfies it, but that means the other side does not satisfy the inequality. And by the way, that is step number seven. After we graph, we determine, seven, we determine the region of interest. Which means this region right here is the proper region under which I can manufacture those sledgehammers and meet all the required conditions, all the constraints. Now notice there is a point over here, there's a point over there, there's a point over there, and there's a point over there. Four points defining that region. So now we need to determine what those points are. So step eight, determine the critical points. So you can see that this point right here is the x value 0 and the y value 250. So that's one of the, two, that's one of the four points. Of course, this point right here is 0, 0, which usually does not give us a desired value because if you produce 0 of each hammer, you're not going to make any profit. This point right here is the point 200, 0. And this point right here is, well, that's what we have to find. And that means we have to take our two equations and solve them simultaneously. We have to set them equal to each other. So when we do that, we get minus 3 quarter x plus 250 equal minus 2x plus 400. So the first thing I want to do is probably multiply both sides of the equation by 4 to get rid of the fraction. When we do that, so we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by 4. Let me move over here where I can have a little bit more room. When we do that, we get minus 3x plus 1,000 equals minus 8x, and that would be plus 1,600. Move all the x's to one side, all the y's, all the numbers to the other side, so that means minus 3x plus 8x equals 1,600 
minus 1,000. That means 5x equals 600 and x equals 120. So my x value of this one right here is 120. My y value can be determined by plugging that value into here. So I can say that therefore y equals minus 2 times 120 plus 400. That's equal to minus 240 plus 400, meaning y equals 160. And that would be the other point. Now, what do these numbers mean? Remember that the first one is the x value and the second one is the y value. That represents the number of each model to be produced. So either we produce 0 of x and 250 of y, or 120x and 160 of y, or 200x and 0 of y, one of those will give us the highest profit. How do we figure out which one will give us the highest profit? Well, we take those numbers, those points, and plug them back into the objective function, the function that defines how much profit we're going to make. So step number nine, we're going to evaluate the objective function to find out which of those conditions, which of those production quotas, so to speak, will give us the highest profit. So we're going to try 0, 0,250. So the profit when x equals 0 and y equals 250 is equal to, and where's my objective function? It's right over here. So it's going to be 4 times x, so 4 times 0, plus 3 times 250 which is equal to 750. That will be the profit, $750, if I decide to make zero of model A and 250 of model B. The next option would be this one right here. That would mean 200 of model A and zero of model B. So the profit at 200, zero, is equal to four times 200 plus zero times 250. Uh, let's see here. Or did I do this right? It's probably better if I write the objective function right on top so I know what I'm doing. So let me do that. So the objective function is P is equal to 4X plus 3Y. And let me go ahead and erase this to make sure I do this correctly. So I want 4 times 200 plus 3 times 0. Ah, much better. There we go. So 4 times 200 is 800. Notice that that will give me a higher profit. So it is better if I operate here than there. This will give me $800 of profit. This will only give me $750 of profit. But what about the third point? Will that even give me a better profit? Let's find out. So here the condition is 120 for X and 160 for Y. So the profit at 120, 160 is equal to 4 times 120 plus 3 times 160. So how much is that? Well, that would be equal to 480 plus, that would be 480, which is equal to 960. And definitely, that's the better place to be at in our manufacturing of the two types of sledgehammers. If I produce 120 of Model A and 160 of Model B, I will make $960 worth of profit, which is the maximum profit. So the answer, we want to make 120 of model A and 160 of model B and that will give me the maximum profit of $960 and that's how we work these optimization problems again just a quick review one define two variables other than the variables you may already have represent the number or the quantity of each model two determine what's being done, we're maximizing the profit. Three, we produce an equation defining that profit. This is the, called the objective function. Four, we define our what we call constraints. We're forced to work with 1,000 pounds or less of iron and 2,400 minutes or less of labor. Then we find the boundary equations that determine the region of interest. So we take the, the inequalities, turn them into equations, write them in the y equals mx plus b format, and we graph them. We then find which side of each equation satisfies inequalities. We put test points, zero, zero is always a good test point, plug those in. We found that those satisfied inequalities, that means the other side of the two lines do not satisfy the inequalities, so we cross those out, and we're now bound by this region right here. 
We then find our critical points. In this case, we have to solve the two equations simultaneously to find a point. So once we have the critical points, we now evaluate the objective function at the critical points to see which one will give us the highest profit. We found the one over here. So this way, 120 of A and 160 of B will give us the maximum profit. That's how we do that.